Yes, guys, welcome back to Flat Cap Eurotalk here, and we are going to be discussing Antonin Barak, you know, the Czech international that I know has been recommended uh, recommended on plenty of occasions uh, for this channel. So I feel like, you know, this has been a long time coming, sort of been waiting, you know, for those rumors to really connect him to Spurs, you know, to release this sort of scout report. Feels like it's not happening. We might be missing out on this, you know, gem of the Serie A, I'll be honest. But, you know, we probably are looking at maybe more higher profile, proven probably players, but we still need to bang out the scout report. This is a very fun player to discuss and someone who actually has featured in the past on the channel, if you did maybe miss it. So we are going to take a look back at when he was on this channel. But let's break down the background of Antony and Brock, everybody, to smash that like button while you're in here. Uh, in last season, 21, 22, 29 matches played, 11 goals goals and four assists. Uh, seven of those were non-penalty goals. So four of those were penalties, by the way. So that really would be seven goals and four assists if you were talking about all non-penalty, you know, sort of involvements. Born in the Czech Republic, 27 years old, stands pretty tall, six foot three, left footed, can play all over the pitch. And that's kind of what really confuses me maybe about his stats is that he's played so many positions this season that, you know, his stats are just so all over the plates. So it is kind of tough to get, you know, a real gauge of you know, how good really Barack is, uh, but he plays as a right winger. He can play as a cam. He can play as a center mid even quite well. Uh, his youth career was over in the Czech Republic. Uh, 18 million pounds is his current evalu valuation and his contract is up in 2024. But let's take a look at maybe his stats from FB ref. And we are comparing him to all kind of creative midfielders or all attacking midfielders and then comparing him to all wingers as well at the same time in all of Europe's top five leagues. You know, maybe just to break this down a bit simpler, everybody, when it comes to those percentiles over on the right, the higher that number is, you know, the closer that number is to 100. Essentially, the greener that number is, as you can even see, the better those numbers are, the better he ranks, you know, compared to all sort of, you know, players in his sort of position when it comes to that certain stat that we're talking about. Uh, pass completion percentage, you know, he's decent there. I think that would probably explain, you know, maybe his pass completion percentage being good is because he plays center mid so often. So he gets maybe more time on the ball than maybe your average attacking midfielder would. Uh, passes under pressure, though, he's practically one of the best in Europe, if not, you know, uh, I think just behind Messi or something like that. Like he's in the top one percentile when it comes to making passes under pressure, which shows that he is good sort of in those, you know, tight areas, especially carries into the final third. He's OK, but he had a lot of touches actually in his defensive penalty area, which really showed that, you know, maybe over at Hellas Verona, he was often playing actually much deeper or is even picking up the ball you know, much deeper than your average sort of winger and midfielder would, which is, again, you know, kind of confusing about his stats when it comes to, you know, maybe understanding where he even really played this season. Uh, Ariel's one, though, he's quite high. You know, he actually has a lot of aerial challenges. I think he has like nearly three or four a game that he has to deal with. So, uh, again, you know, something that's very unorthodox for sort of an attacking mid and winger. Again, I feel like they, you know, on FB rep, they should have compared him maybe more to midfielders because that's by the looks of it, you know, maybe where he'd been playing this season. But I could be wrong. Do correct me in the comments. Shot creating actions didn't rank so high and then key passes didn't rank so high, which is kind of disappointing because he does seem to be a very, very good player. Uh, and sort of the link up play and the creative ability. And I really do like Anthony Barak. But before I kind of, you know, give my thoughts on him, maybe we'll take a look back at what I said before in a video where I actually discuss all of the players I think that were having really good seasons that were sort of unknown players, you know, across Europe's top five leagues that were having good seasons. Anthony Barak was a huge feature in that one. So do check out that video after you finish this one here, everybody. But let's check it out. All of us are maybe that familiar with him. And we're starting off with a big man header right there as well. But this, you know, also this uh, highlight package, I believe, is from, you know, a little while ago. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. Outside, he rocks the short uh, shin pads as well and the short socks, which you just have to love. It's one of my favorite type of looks as well for a player. He is graceful. And like I said as well, people, you know, that Czech Republic team, you know, I would say maybe Patrick Schick, Thomas Suchek, um, and some other players in that team were, you know, kind of seen as maybe the main players, the main, you know, sort of guys and, you know, how that team sort of functioned. If you really watch back a lot of those Czech Republic games, it really was actually, I think, Antony Barak that was sort of kind of the, you know, the, the creator in that team. He was kind of the guy often kind of linking things together, you know, sort of being that creative force out wide for them. And, he played mostly, I think, as a right wing, you know, for uh, the Czech Republic, but he was very effective out there. And I do really like, you know, his game. He obviously is a very skilled dribbler, sort of kind of has a lot of patience, you know, about him. And 
even plays, you know, mostly like a center mid, but can clearly play out wide as well and can come in and score goals. But he plays sort of like a, you know, slow sort of kind of, you know, methodical sort of kind of, you know, center mid at the same time while being able to play out wide. I do like Anthony Brock. That is also gross. That is gross. That is disgusting. You have to bury that. That is a beautiful pass as well. Woo. See ya. Tidy finish. Very tidy finish. Ooh, Adam Hlotzek. Oh, beautiful pass. Lovely feet. Lovely feet. Great finish. Ooh, see ya. Ooh. That's a great ball. He knows how to really slip through these sort of, he seems very dangerous, you know, right outside the penalty area. He does know how to dink passes in. He seems to have tons of, you know, composure. He does make these sort of late runs in, as we just said as well. And he can, you know, make those late runs in to either make a tap in or he can hit it in with his head. He's very good in the air, as we know, since he is six foot three. Yeah, he has very composed feet. I really do like a player that, you know, sort of carries the ball like that. You know, they don't really need any pace or anything. It's just very tidy, close control, just glued to the foot, absolutely glued to the foot. It's actually kind of similar to why I love, you know, Kavicha, um, you know, the Georgian, you know, winger so much. It's just because he doesn't really ever need to, you know, use pace past this player, just keeps it absurdly close to his feet, and it just makes it a nightmare for a defender. And he's excellent with these slip through balls, I must say, Anthony Brock is. Oh, that is just gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Uh, just these pirouettes that he does are just so beautiful, I must say. Oh, gorgeous. Oh. oh, beautiful. Oof. Oh, I love these outside foot through balls that he can play. And you know, so I take penalties, but you know, some of his goals definitely are inflated by the penalty. Big man header. Over Alexandro as well. He has a certain class about him. He really does. It was a certain just very methodical, you know, class about him. I do really like it. I do really like the look of, you know, Barack. Ooh, ooh. I'll have a hit, son. Lovely. Yeah, he just seems to be one of those gems, you know, just one of those, you know, secretly, you know, brilliant players that just, you know, doesn't play for one of the huge clubs, you could say. That's why, you know, I thought he was one of the best, you know, examples of that video that I did do. Unknown players having a great season. And Anthony Barak is just one of the best examples of it. Like someone who clearly has skill, someone who's clearly class. Just, you know, maybe hasn't exactly, you know, performed on the highest level on a consistent basis enough maybe to be at a top, top club. But clearly, he, you know, he's finding himself. Clearly, he's finding his form over at Hellas Verona and as well as for the Czech national team. Because if you watch back some of the Euros uh, kind of games for the Czech team, I mean, he really was brilliant for them. Oh, he is just beautiful with those feet. Oh, lovely first time. Great finish again.
Oh, beautiful. Uh, keep that. Lovely. There you are, everybody. Anthony Barack. Really like this guy. Really like this sort of talent. Um, what I do, what I would say maybe is that it's kind of probably too late to get him, you know, maybe with, you know, where Spurs are headed, what maybe the aspirations are, just someone that I just don't really see us going after. If we were going for maybe a cheap sort of creative midfielder that can also maybe play as a center mid as well. Yeah, you could go for him. But do we really need to go for a cheap creative midfielder? Definitely not. But you know, just want to put this guy's name out there because he is definitely a very much a hidden gem of the Serie A. Someone that, you know, I feel like if, if a club is looking for maybe a, a cheaper deal on a creative playmaker, certainly this guy, because he can play all over the pitch, you know, clearly is just an absolute baller. I really like Anthony Brock. So there you are, everybody. The Anthony Brock Scott report finally done. Uh, shout out to Martin Walton and plenty of others that suggested this guy. And also, I would say, everybody, do check out that unknown players having a great season. YouTube were even kind enough, you know, to even put, you know, all the players into little chapters. So you can even just, you know, skip ahead, find certain players that you want to hear what I had to say about. So do check out that video, everybody. Smash that like button on your way out, and I will be seeing you.